Hi, I'm Lori Niles at violinist.com and it's time for you to change your strings. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. Here are some of the things that you should gather before you get started, okay? Um, in no particular order, a pencil, graphite pencil that's sharp. Um, I usually have some tweezers just in case I need them. Peg dope, uh, which you can get from Char. It's the, the lubricant for the pegs. Um, if you don't have that, I'm gonna show you like an alternate uh, homegrown way to do it, which is some dry soap, like the plainest possible ivory, something with no scents or anything, and baby powder, okay? More about that later. Um, alcohol wipes to clean your fingerboard. I just get this big package of them and they're great for cleaning the fingerboard. Some strings, whatever you like. Right now I've been using obligados because they have a lot of the same qualities as Eva Parazzi's only they're a little quieter, which is great right now. Um, and some Kleenexes, and I'll show you what all of that is for. So here's what you need to know to begin with. First of all, do not take all of the strings off of your violin. The only thing that holds up this bridge is the, the pressure from those strings. It exerts about 90 pounds of pressure on them. So just do one string at a time. I like to start with the A string, the one in the middle. All the tension changes when you take off a string, so keep that in mind. Now, one way that I like to sit that I think makes it easier for me to like use both hands and do this is, you know, I sit where I have plenty of room and I put my knees right here to hold up the violin while I'm, while I'm working. That way I can work with the violin. Okay, so first I'm gonna take off my A string. I'm just gonna completely take it off. This is every child's dream, right? Just take off this whole string, woo. All right, some people keep their old strings. I generally don't because um, I, I've never really found, you, you know, sometimes if you break a string or something, it's nice to have that. All right, this is just residue left over from the strings and there's probably a lot of like grimy finger, you know, oil on there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take one of my alcohol wipes. I like the wipes because you're not gonna drip alcohol on your violin. So you never wanna get alcohol on this varnished part of your violin. It's okay on the fingerboard though, okay? Now, it's gonna be really kind of alarming. This is, I'm gonna get my Kleenex out because I'm gonna dry it really fast. How black this stuff is, you should not, your your fingerboard is made out of black wood. So if you're getting that disgusting color, that is just the dirt from your fingers. Ew. Um, but um, you shouldn't be rubbing off paint unless you have a very kind of a cheap violin, sorry to say. Um, and then I just dry it really fast so that it's, it's not wet. Okay. And... Um, you know, just try to get some of that. This is just a good opportunity to clean things off. I'm not sure if I got that 100%, but there we go. Um, so I just clean under the A string there. Okay, I'm always forgetting this, but don't forget just a little bit of this. And at the nut as well, just in that groove, just to keep the string moving so it doesn't get stuck at either the bridge or the nut. Okay, now, um, I'm going to show you some things, but I'm just going to take out the peg and show you a few things first here. So um, these are the areas you can see where it's kind of worn. This is um, where it touches um, the peg box on the other side, you know, and this is where it touches. These are the two places where it touches the peg box. And this is what you need to lubricate um, with your, your peg dope. Now, keep in mind... A little goes a long way. Don't put that much on. I just like draw like like a tiny little line of it. Depending on, you know, whether, if, if your peg has gotten really, really sticky, you might want a little more, but I just, a little tiny bit here. And then when I'm done with that, I, I put it in, before I, before I put my string on, I just kind of do this to kind of like spread things around and and make it good. Now, so I wanna show you, in case you don't have peg dope, what you can do. I'm gonna put my peg over here. So this, these are some pegs from an old violin. Um, sadly, my old violin had all four different kinds of pegs. It was terrible. <laughs> um, but here is what you can do if you don't have peg dope. Thank you to Rick Molzer, this fantastic luthier. 
in Colorado who showed me this trick. Okay, so you take dry soap and just make it something unscented, the plainest soap you can find. Dry, dry, okay? And you just, you paint it on kind of like I painted on um, the peg dope, okay? And um, so you get enough of that on, that's the lubricant. And then <laughs> this is kind of a fun trick. Baby powder, okay? I'm just gonna put a little in a bowl here for myself to use. And this is what makes it stick. So if it's too like slidey, this will stop it up a little bit. So every time I would take my um, my violin to Rick, I, I, there'd be baby powder all over the place. But this works really well. You know, so you put it on those two places, you know, just a little bit, and that will serve the same function and it's fine for the violin. And you guys can all argue with me about that, but I just wanted to show you just in case you don't have the peg. Dope. Okay, back to the violin. I'm gonna get my peg here. And um, I'm gonna show you a little bit. I'm gonna show you outside of the violin um, what you're gonna do on the inside because it's so, it's very hard to see. So I hope you, if you need reading glasses, certainly wear them and have good light for this. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna put, you're gonna put the um, string in the hole, all right? And then you're gonna wind it around. Now, you're gonna catch it. I catch it on the other side of the peg. You're gonna catch it like that, okay? Well, <laughs> this is hard to do like outside the violin. You're gonna catch it like that, but then you're gonna wind it toward the peg box and toward the peg, okay? And depend. it really depends. You can wind it super tight against the peg box if you have a hard time with your peg sticking. But if your peg holes are pretty good, don't wind it really, really tight because that'll start enlarging the hole for your peg. So um, so I just wanted to show you that. That's what I'm gonna do on the inside, all right? Um, okay, so I'm gonna put this back. Make sure I got the right one, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back in here. Um, I'm gonna put my violin secure so I can use both hands. Okay, so you're gonna put this in, and you, you can sort of like move the peg around. Actually, I'm gonna use this hole. Um, you can move the peg around at this stage. Um, and you're gonna get it so that it sticks out just a little bit, and then you're gonna catch it. Whoops, I didn't catch it. See, sometimes this, this part takes a little while. Okay, I'm getting out my tweezers. Gonna pull it out a little, make it go sideways there a little bit so I can catch it. All right, I think I got it. And now I'm just gonna bring it over to the other side. I can't see it. And start going towards the peg box, okay? Now at this stage though, you have to be aware of the other side of your string. So get it kind of rolling. Keep the tension in your string, okay? Or you'll undo what you've done. And then this is another place where you might need like your uh, tweezers or something. But Okay, so I've kept the tension. And my pegs right now, they fit pretty well. So I am not gonna roll, I'm not gonna make it super tight against the peg box. Okay, now here's something I forgot to tell you to do. <laughs> do this beforehand. So with your pencil, you're gonna put a little bit of graphite here. This is so that the, the um, string moves over the bridge and the nut easily. So you're gonna do that, all right. Do that before you um, actually wind the string. Okay, and then you're gonna um, tune it up. Okay, so now what I did, just put a bunch of this way pressure on my bridge. So I'm gonna let the pressure off. This is a 
scary move. Take your thumbs, put them on the wood like this, okay? And then you're gonna just pull up like a tenth of a centimeter, make sure it settles back down. And that lets the tension out of that, okay? Okay, so that's how you do that one. Um, what I'd like to do next is show you the E string. The other strings are gonna be really similar to the A string, but the E string is a little bit of a outlier. So I'm gonna get my E string out here. I decided to do a parastro gold this time, because I like those. Um, all right, so. Um, I'm gonna take off the E string, which has quite a lot of tension. Um, okay, now, here's what I do when I do the E string. I actually take the A string and I stick it over here for a while. Okay, that's a temporary move. But so this is so I can get at the E string. Okay, so I'm taking off the E string. can hear all that squeaking. That means I probably do need some peg dope. All right, so once again, I'm gonna paint on a little bit of peg dope if I can find, oh, there it is. All right, just a bit, not very much, just enough to keep things moving, but not moving too much. Okay, so that's plenty. Um, I'm gonna make sure it's in there. I'm gonna I'm gonna clean it off too. All right, so the thing about the alcohol wipes is you have to have a whole bunch of them on hand because they're gonna dry out in between. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm cleaning off the fingerboard. When you're doing the outside strings, you know, you might wanna do a little bit over here. And you're gonna be real careful not to touch the actual violin. And then I just kind of wipe this off just so that it just doesn't, it's not wet for very long. Right, and at this stage, you wanna do your little pencil thing. At the nut. Might not be necessary. I do have like a little E string guard, but I still do the pencil thing anyway. Okay, now on your E string, you have this thing. If you don't want it on there, this, this is another E string guard to keep it from cutting, it goes here. To keep it from cutting your bridge, of course, it always like falls off and everything. You can just take it off of this of this stage if you want to. I generally do leave it on. Um, it'd be neat if this would stay. Mine just hooks. I'm really lucky. Mine just kind of hooks around um, like that. Um, it's not going to stay though, so I'm just going to start with this end. All right. So as I said, my this hole is really far in, so I have to like sort of take the peg out to make this work. And then you want to stick it through, so it's like, mm, I don't know, four millimeters maybe of string sticking out. And then once again, I'm gonna try to put that under there. And then once I've achieved that, I'm gonna put, put my peg back in and start winding it toward toward the peg box. Now, here's the tricky part for the E string. You really have to keep this tension in here or it's just gonna pop out of there. All right, so I'm keeping the tension. And I, I'm also pushing in, and this is important to do for all the pegs. You have to push in a bit as you, as you, um, wind it because that pressure inward is kind of the only thing holding it up. Okay, and so now I'm gonna put this on here and we'll see where it ends up when I get it all wound. All right. And now at first you're gonna, you're gonna um, tune things a little high at first because you have to stretch out the string. That's pretty high. Um, I'm gonna let out the tension again. And as you see, this thing moved. It's, you know, that's kind of what happens. So I'm gonna loosen it again and, you know, just a little bit. 
like as little as I can get away with to like get it back on there because you don't want it hanging over too much but like the winding and the unwinding always changes its position. See, look, at, it fell off again. So this is kind of a tricky, tricky part of it. We'll see what happens here. Yeah, maybe that was too far that way. So 300 year old technology, everybody. It is a little tricky to work with. I'm gonna put my A back so that we have good not there, A string. Make sure everything is in the right grooves. Once again, I've put a whole bunch of pressure on there. I'm gonna let it out with this special move here. Thumbs down here. Lift it up tiny, tiny bit. Also on the E, it's even scarier on the E. You just lift it, barely lift it, okay? And that makes it go flat um, because you've let out the tension. And I'll probably leave that a little bit sharp. Um, I can go, some people say not to do it them all on one day. And I used to say that too. And you know, I usually just do them all at one time. <laughs> um, so um, you guys can argue about that if you'd like. Um, but um, you can space it out over several days. Do the A one day. Next day, do the D, um, etc. The other thing that's going to happen is your bridge is going to move. So you're going to have to straighten that out. Okay, on to the D. I'm just going to take it out. Ding. Open another alcohol wipe. Uh, clean things off. And once again, no, this is not paint coming off. This is just disgusting dirt. Um, but it feels so good when you're done to have like a clean fingerboard. Let me just say, it feels very good. All right. New string. Um, this might be more likely to stay. We'll see, we'll try doing this first and see if it actually stays. Um, it's the E string where it really doesn't stay. And then, I'm always forgetting this, but don't forget just a little bit of this. And at the nut as well, just in that groove, just to keep the string moving so it doesn't get stuck at either the bridge or the nut. All right. Back to my position that allows me to use my hands. Oh, the peg. Let's put a little bit of peg dope on there. You know, you don't have to do this every single time with the peg dope. I just put very, very little. If, if it's feeling really slidey, you might not need any peg dope this time around. You know, you just kind of um, evaluate, okay, is it too slidey, is it not? And then, you know, if it is just really too slidey, you can use the um, the baby powder trick to get it to stop up a bit. All right, so you see I left a tail about that big. I'm gonna wind it around. Now this time I have to go on the other side because it's the D string. We're winding the peg away from us always. Got it. Okay, now I'm gonna come back around this way. You see I'm, the, the direction I'm winding the string is away. Um, and then I'm gonna wind it toward the peg box. And now I gotta check, make sure it's staying in the groove. It's gonna go into the groove here. See, now you can see that I am not winding it tight against the peg box. But that is something that you can do if, if your pegs are slipping too much. You can wind it tighter against the peg, peg box to actually push the peg in. And I, for a long time, had a violin um, where it was necessary to do that.
See how it's already going flat, even as I'm raising it. I'm gonna make it a little sharp. Now I'm gonna let the tension out. Okay, here's my trick again. Thumbs, boing, lifting it just barely off the bridge. See how it went flat, then I make it. See, this is already flat. The E won't go as flat. It's just, it doesn't have as much synthetic material in it. Okay, now I'm probably gonna do the same thing for the G that I did for the E, even though I, I just put this D on. But I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna go like, you go over here for a bit. Um, and I just need a G here. Where are you, G? Okay, so I'm gonna get out my Gs. And here we go. And start the process all over again. I'm gonna take off the G. Thank you for your service. And boing, gonna get another alcohol wipe because the other ones have dried out. And I'm making a right mess over here. Um, so this is the last one. Just make sure with this last wipe that everything is pretty clean with your fingerboard. And it's gonna feel great. It's like changing your sheets or something. Like, oh wow, this fingerboard feels good. Okay, so get the rosin off here, get the dirt off, and then I just kind of wipe it, dry it off a little faster. All right. Let's put on this, G oh, nope. Let's, I'm doing this in a different sequence every time, you guys, but you can do whatever sequence you want, but we do the, the pencil, the pencil trick. And then take this out, a little bit of a little bit of peg dope on here. It's probably enough. And then I put it in and just spread it around a little. Okay, now let's put this string on. I'm gonna start by sticking it in here. The G really should stay. Okay. Now let's find this hole. So it's kind of way over here. So I'm taking the peg out. This is so far, you know what? I might just go in on this one since it's got a lot of room to go. All right, so it's just so you catch that. It's just more likely that your string will stay if you can catch that end under the string. Okay, you know, I, okay, I think this is okay. You just don't want it too, too tight against the peg. You know what, honestly, it's a little too tight against the pegboard. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna scoot it over a little. I'm just gonna start winding it over here. I'm gonna catch it, I think, on this end, but I just don't want to start so far over. Okay. Um, so winding it to the peg box, but for me with good fitting pegs, I'm just not gonna go way tight against the peg box. Like I said, if you need to, then do it. It'll help the, the um, Peg to stay in. Okay, I'm gonna put my D string back where it belongs. Um, and so, and then for the next, for a few days, this will be way, way, way flat. Every time you open up your violin. Okay, and we have to let the tension out of both the D and the G. All right, now the other thing, the next thing we have to do is just make sure the bridge moves forward usually. So I just move it back a little bit until it's basically fairly straight. Um, it, that's always a little hard to judge. I find it kind of hard to judge, but um, so you have to be very careful moving your bridge, just very delicately keep the feet where they should be. You just don't want it to start leaning forward because you changed the strings. And watch that in the weeks after you change your your strings. 
And so the, this is, I'm sure, quite flat. I don't have perfect pitch, so I couldn't tell you where this A has gone, but I'll um, probably leave it, um, when I put it in my case, I'll just tune it just a little bit high to stretch the strings because it'll definitely be flat by the time, by the time um, you get your violin out again. So that is how to change your strings. I hope you find it really helpful. And please, um, uh, please join us on violinist.com, the website, and please join our YouTube channel and have a great day.